This part of the video actually sits in between the statement 2 and 3. So here's the beginning of the um, statement 3. Give an x value in between a and a plus beta. And we can look at the ser and sequences, and, and sh we showed it in part 2 that this converges all the time. For x value, if you send n to infinity, this will become a number all the time. So that gives you a functional relation, x, and whatever the value that's the convergence point, that's going to be the function value. And the statement of the part 3 is that this function we define actually satisfy the differential equation. If you look at the statement of this integral equation, not the differential equation, it requires the integrating this right-hand side through that part. Then to show the right-hand side exists before we actually make this comparison left-hand side equal to right-hand side, we have to um, make sure that this integral exists. So that's logically something that has to be done. So we know this function's inside is a continuous, then this integral exists. So we have to establish that the function we're defining it here in a very pointwise way, and we have to show this is a continuous function. The statement that is shown here is called a sequential continuity. The space, the real numbers we're looking at, is equivalent, and it is a lot more convenient than epsilon delta. So this is a perfectly rigorous way of uh, dealing with the continuity. So c is going to be an arbitrary number in here. The, f um, the next thing we do, it has to be arbitrary sequence that converges to c, not just one particular sequence. So if we pick an arbitrary number c in there, an arbitrary sequence that converges to c on this interval. If you can show the function value approaches the y of c, this establishes the continuity at that point c. So that's what we're going to show. So this proves the continuity of this function y we're defining. So what we have in practice for um, this y instead uh, is this y ends. So instead of looking at y of xk and y of c, we're going to look at y n x k and y n and y n c and see um, what we can do about it. So by its Picard iteration, y n of x k is going to be this iteration. With, instead of x in there, we have x k. This one here, instead of x there, we have c, and x k is very close to c. Then we have y n minus 1 and y n minus 1. So instead of taking the difference of these two, we're going to take the difference of these two and see if we can maneuver around. This time when you subtract these two, the function is the same, and the limits are different. So when I subtracted these two, and this y0 cancels, and here's the same function, by um, extended definition of integral, whether xk is greater than c or not, you can always write it like this with a positive sign out there. Now next part is the taking the n approaching infinity procedure so that because that converges and that converges no matter what these values are it's going to turn it to um, x, y of xk and y of c. You just have to be a little bit careful with the right hand side. So here's the version I'm being careful. The left hand side definitely changes to value of y's. The right hand side we just put the limit and approaches infinity. I have to show this one is actually what we want. What we want is that this yn minus 1 is replaced by y of t, and then and this will be what we want. Actually, no, I misspoke, and we have to show um, under this setting that we have to show that this approach is 0, so that this, this two thing approaches 0. So as usual, we put epsilon value around it, and then I'm going to put epsilon value inside it here and make it bigger. So we put epsilon value around it here, and we have epsilon value of f, and we know this thing is bounded inside the box, so therefore we can replace this one with a maximum value m1 and get a slightly bigger but simpler um, bound, which is this one over here, m1. I think when I put this absolute value around here, I should have put this plus minus here. Now, depending on the size of x, k, and c, it changes to negative numbers. Therefore, this positive negative should have put into in this level so that it um, adjusts the um, relative size of x, k relative to c here. 
but I put plus minus here, so that part is what you should look at. Now this part you can calculate, m1 is just a constant, so if you calculate this integral, it's an absolute value of xk minus c. Now then you, you can lose a plus minus in there. So here's the key thing, this y of xk minus y of c is always less than or equal to this value m1 times xk minus c. If you think about it, this is almost a proof as xk approaches c, m1 is fixed and what can happen to this one as this one approaches 0, this y of xk must approach y of c. So, however this xk approaches c, the function value must approach y of c as well. So this proves the continuity at the point c, and c was arbitrary, therefore the function is continuous everywhere in the interval a to a plus beta.